Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, I want to talk today about what was just invoked this week at the United Nations and why the words that came out of his mouth were extremely significant and right out of the pages of end times Bible prophecy. So what just happened was the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres just invoked Article 99 of the United Nations Charter. Before we go into this, let me share with you a little clip invoking Article 99, and then we are going to talk about it. Uh, given the scale of the loss of human life in Gaza and in Israel in such a short amount of time, the Secretary General has today delivered a letter to the President of the Security Council invoking Article 99 of the Charter of the United Nations. This is the first time that Antonio Guterres has done this since he became Secretary General in 2017. Article 99 states, and I quote, that the Secretary General may bring to the attention of the Security Council any matter in his opinion that may threaten the maintenance of international peace and security. In the letter which has been shared with you, the Secretary General urges the members of the Security Council to press to avert a humanitarian catastrophe, and he appeals for a humanitarian ceasefire to be declared. Now, why is what he just said so significant in regards to end times Bible prophecy? We're going to get there in a second, but what I wanted to cover first when you go to the United Nations' own website talking about Article 99, uh, this is what we read. With an intensifying Israeli offensive and escalating civilian casualties, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres invoked a rarely exercised power this week to warn the Security Council of an impending humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. He urged the members to demand an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. Guterres invoked Article 99 of the UN Charter, which was last used over half a century ago, which says that the Secretary General may inform the Council of matters he believes threaten international peace and security. Article 99 is extremely rarely used. The last time it was invoked was during fighting in 1971 that led to the creation of Bangladesh and its separation from Pakistan. Guterres invoked Article 99 because he sees the situation in Gaza at risk of a complete collapse of the territory's humanitarian system and civil order. It was something he felt needed to be done. But again, what I really want you to pay attention to is what Article 99 actually states. Again, it states the following. The Secretary General may bring to the attention of the Security Council any matter which, in his opinion, may threaten the maintenance of international peace and security. Peace and security. Now, why is this significant? Well, when you go to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Verses 1 to 4, the Apostle Paul records the following. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, other transla translations render it peace and security, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So very clearly here, the Apostle Paul is saying it's going to be a time when people are saying peace and safety, peace and security, then sudden destruction is going to come. Now, what do they do every year with the United Nations, with the General Assembly, the other United Nations summits, and the COP conferences, the conference of the parties, they have one going on right now. Uh, when they get all the world leaders together, what are they doing? They're talking about peace and security, peace and safety, just like it says in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. 
Now, folks, every year at the United Nations General Assembly and the COP conferences, you actually have a COP conference going on right now, every year we hear them cry for peace and safety, peace and security. But what makes this very incredible is you just had the United Nations chief invoke Article 99 of the UN Charter to secure a ceasefire in Gaza. And literally, when you read Article 99, it states, the Secretary General may bring to the attention of the Security Council any matter which, in his opinion, may threaten the maintenance of international peace and security. Peace and security. It's literally right there, folks. So this is absolutely something to pay attention to because we're told again in Scripture that when they are crying peace and safety or peace and security, then sudden destruction is going to come upon them as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. So it talks about an escape here. They're not going to escape, but who will escape? Those that are saved, those that are born again believers in Jesus Christ. When this comes, this sudden destruction, we, those of us that are saved, born again believers in Jesus Christ, are going to be suddenly removed rescued out of harm's way before this when this sudden destruction hits to meet Jesus in the air at the rapture while he takes us to heaven to be with him uh, forever in heaven while the judgment of God is being poured out on humanity during the coming tribulation period, uh, period. Folks, it's so in our face right now. The cry for peace and safety, peace and security continues with the United Nations, with the COP conferences, and we just had Article 99 invoked, which literally has peace and security stated in it. You can't make this stuff up. All I can tell you, if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what the Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back one day, very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking, and it is sinking fast, just like the Titanic. You need to get on the light boat, right here and right now. That light boat is Jesus Christ and Him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, Verses 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross at Calvary. So you could be reconciled back to him. Forgiven of your sins and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused... Here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming, and he's coming one day, very, very, very soon. Keep looking up, keep watching with me, and God bless you all.